I was eager for my summer vacation to begin. My friend, let's call him Mike, and I had made the decision to leave the city and relax on a secluded beach because the year had been long and demanding. We pictured relaxing days spent in the sun and sand. We had no idea that our dreamy summertime excursion would soon become a terrifying reality. It was a hot, sunny afternoon when we got to the beach. Our feet felt soft in the sand and the sound of crashing waves was calming. The ideal escape from the pressures of daily life, it seemed like paradise. In a hurry to enjoy the peace that awaited us, we quickly set up camp close to the water. The initial days fulfilled all of our expectations. Swimming, tanning, and drinking icy cold beers were some of our pastimes. With hardly a person in sight, the beach seemed like our own private paradise. But as the days went by, we started to notice a strange thing, wind-borne faint whispers. Mike and I looked at each other in confusion as we tried to make out the distant voices. The sound of laughter and chatter in the air made it seem as though kids were laughing and chatting just out of sight. We combed the beach in hopes of spotting some children hiding in the sand dunes. However, nobody could be seen. It was perplexing and spooky. The voices became more audible as the evenings wore on, disturbing our tranquil retreat. Even as we were laying in our sleeping bags, we could hear their squeals and giddiness. We could not see a single child anywhere, but the sounds appeared to come from various directions, as if a group of kids were scattered all around us. It gave us chills. The voices continued to haunt us during the day and invaded our dreams night after night. The unsettling presence that encircled us eventually consumed us. Our nerves were frayed and sleep was becoming elusive. We questioned whether the isolation of the far-off beach had misled us or whether something more sinister was at work. We made the decision to look up the area's history because we were desperate for solutions. We located an old newspaper at our campsite and as we paged through its tattered pages, one of its headlines caught our eye. Tragic drowning incident on a nearby beach. Two kids are believed to be dead. It described a tragic occurrence that had taken place on this exact beach 18 years earlier. The article claims that a sudden undertow dragged two young siblings, a boy and a girl, into the ocean's depths as they were enjoying themselves near the shore. They were never found, despite intensive searches. Since then, there have been rumors of ghostly voices and unexplained events on the beach, leaving the tragic incidents to haunt the area. We read the article while feeling a chill run down our spines. The voices we had been hearing were those of the lost children who were stuck between this world and the next forever. Suddenly, it all made sense. They yearned to be understood and acknowledged, and somehow, we had unintentionally joined them in their spectral game. With this newfound information in hand, we made a decision to deal with the ghosts that had troubled our vacation. We went to the location where the kids had met their tragic end all those years earlier and collected offerings a bouquet of flowers and a small toy. A profound unease engulfed us as we stood on the sand. Our ears were filled with their wailing wails as the voices in the air became more dense and silent remembrance of the deceased. We placed the flowers and the toy on the shore. And then, as if by magic, the voices started to disappear, to be replaced by a harrowing silence. We felt a weight lift off our shoulders as we made our way back to our campsite. The spectral laughter that had plagued us had vanished from the beach, leaving it quiet once more. The remaining days of our trip were spent in quiet reflection as we cherished the peace that had returned to the formerly eerie shores. We finally gathered our belongings and departed the beach, and we were aware that we had just gone through an extraordinary experience, a terrifying experience that will live on in our memories it was a summer break unlike any other. And as we departed, we couldn't help but wonder if the lost children's spirits had at last found the tranquility they had been searching for. Their souls freed from the restless shores they had called home for far too long. The summer of my dreams was here. The promise of a much needed break from the daily grind was accompanied by the scorching sun the cooling lake, and these three natural elements. I had reserved a comfortable cabin by the glistening lake that was tucked away in the woods. 
Little did I know that my idyllic trip would quickly deteriorate into a terrifying nightmare. First impressions of the cabin were positive. Wooden walls and a squeaky front porch gave it a rustic charm. The picture-perfect lake surrounded by soaring trees was visible through the windows and looked like something out of a postcard. I believed it to be the ideal getaway. The initial nights went by without incident. My days were spent swimming in the lake and my nights were spent grilling by the fire. However, a peculiar occurrence started to come into focus as the sun dipped below the horizon. The cabin began to echo with barely audible whispers in the beginning. My initial reaction was to write it off as my imagination being deceptive. But as the hours passed, the whispers grew louder and an unsettling presence began to permeate the air. The cabin seemed to be hiding secrets that it was dying to tell me. Each morning at 324, the whispers would start and continued for five tense minutes until 3.29 a.m. I made an effort to explain the phenomenon by attributing it to wind or some natural acoustics, but I had a gut feeling that something evil was going on. My heart would beat quickly with a mixture of fear and excitement each night as the time approached 3.24. I finally gave in to my curiosity one night and decided to look into the whispers' origins I took out my flashlight and followed the ethereal sound as I skulked through the dimly lit cabin. With each step, the whispers seemed to lead the way, becoming clearer and louder. The whispers intensified as I entered the bedroom. My body trembled in a combination of fear and fascination as the air was thick with an otherworldly energy. I pressed my ear against a bedroom wall in an effort to hear any discernible words among the eerie murmurs. I eventually heard it. The darkness was broken by a low, raspy voice. It spoke in a language I couldn't understand, dripping with a chilling despondency that made my skin tingle. The voice appeared to be that of a soul in agony, caught between the worlds of the living and the dead. I stumbled away from the wall in terror as I had a million questions racing through my head. I felt a deep sense of unease, as if I had unknowingly invited something sinister into my life. Who or what was trapped within these cabin walls? Why were they reaching out to me? The whispers intensified over the course of the days, taking on an increasingly urgent tone. I couldn't get to sleep, so I degenerated into a mere shell of who I had been. The haunting nights had tarnished the once lovely summer days. I decided to leave the cabin behind because I couldn't take the suffering any longer. The lake, the cabin, and the enigmatic whispers that had consumed my summer vacation were all that I had left behind as I packed up and left in my car. However, the nightmares followed me. I used to awaken in a cold sweat, even in the comfort of my own home. The echoes of those ominous whispers still present in my head. My very being seemed to have been infused with the cabin's presence, which clung to me and wouldn't let go. I looked into the past of the cabin in the lake in search of explanations. At that point, I learned a tragic story. That very cabin had previously housed a family in the past before an unspeakable tragedy happened. Their lives had been happy. All the people who lived in the cabin perished in a fire that broke out in the middle of the night. The echoes of the tortured spirits imprisoned within these charred remains of the cabin were revealed to be the whispers. In the darkness, they cried out for relief as they looked for solace. Guilt-written, I made a commitment to assist in bringing peace to these troubled souls. With my holy water and sage at the ready, I went back to the cabin. I conducted rituals and recited prayers in an effort to rid the area of its uneasy occupants. I experienced an influx of energy as the whispers refilled the air. The spirits spoke back, becoming more subdued and thankful in their tones. They seemed to have found comfort in my presence, knowing that their situation had been noticed. The whispers eventually stopped in a final exhalation. As if the spirit's burden had been lifted, the cabin descended into a profound silence. I was confident that I had done my part to aid these souls search for peace. I still have nightmares about that awful summer. My dreams are still filled with the whispers, which serve as a reminder of the sinister secrets that are kept in that remote cabin. It taught me that some mysteries 
are better left unsolved and left me forever changed by the experience.